So I recently tabled at Destrahan Fall Fest. This is my second year. If you watch the first recap, you guys know that did not go super well. So let's find out if I've learned anything and if the Fall Fest has improved at all. So join me for my year two Destrahan Fall Fest craft fair recap. This weekend is the Destrahan Fall Fest and it is Friday and Joseph and I are going to go over there and set up the tent and the tables in that little car that everyone makes fun of for us having instead of, I don't know, a giant diesel truck like everyone else in Louisiana. We're bringing three tables, some retail grids that we purchased off of a friend, our tent, our tent walls, a chair. We're not really bringing a whole, whole lot because uh, I mean, even though it looks beautiful outside, I mostly sell paper goods and I wouldn't want them to get wrecked. So here is a plan of my revised tent setup. Hopefully you guys can see it. I don't want to stand like directly in front of it because you guys can see the sun is like right behind me. Okay, so you guys can see the tents. Supposedly, Joseph counted and they added like 25 new vendors. That's why I said like. That could have been our parking, but I think we're gonna park along River Road. Okay, kind of feels like Joseph and I are the last ones getting set up. We were hoping to get out here by three, but uh, <laughs> his work bled over, which is, that's just one of the realities of working and doing this. So we, oh, if they have me in a ditch, I will actually cry. So we're gonna find out if I'm in a ditch. Okay, that's me, 91D. in this weird little corner that you have to jump a ditch for. So we will see.
So this is the new setup with the retail grids. I bought them from my friend Jolene and I already like them better than those stupid convention grids I was using forever. So walk you through. This is going to be originals. This is going to be outside the tent. The print rack, the original rack is going to be outside the tent. This is going to have originals up on it. That's going to be all originals as well. On the table is going to be There we go, sorry. The mugs, the charms, maybe the spinner racks. And then over here is going to be the print versions of stuff. I may have the spinner racks over here instead. I have two print containers, the nine by nine and nine by 12s and the 11 by 14. So they're gonna go on the table and I do think I'm gonna put the spinner racks on that table and then have some examples of the prints. Over here is going to be the books and then out front here is going to be an eye catch for the books. So Joseph was saying he thinks we might be the furthest you can get from an entrance because there are multiple entrances. I don't think he's wrong. Some people got the same spaces they had last year. We did not. I can't tell you why. And Joseph is wrapping up. There's the banner. As we keep doing these kinds of shows, I will probably get a big 10 foot something maybe even get somebody to do something on the side of the tent. But this is my first time with tent walls. In fact, this is a brand new tent. We got it for sale on Slick Deals. I think it is kind of cheap, but it's a lot better than what we had. So there you go. All right, it is 5.07 on Friday. We've still got a lot of work. Got one of these to deal with. That's definitely not an accessibility issue. Yeah, they built out until like a, a sunroom was what I was thinking about. They built a sunroom. There's my tent. All right, we're running late for Fall Fest. Uh, I had a really rough morning. I got like maybe four hours of sleep and I feel terrible. Uh, so we're going to try to do this. We do have a parking tag, but I don't know where we're going to park in the vendor parking because... Okay, so it is Saturday morning at the Dashterham Fall Fest. It rained this morning and I wasn't feeling the best. So we waited until it kind of quit raining and until my hair had dried, because I washed my hair this morning, to head out and finish setting up. And when we got here, everything was wet. Fortunately, we only had like the tent walls, the tables, things like that. So they could be wiped dry, but I'm really glad I didn't set up my paper goods last night because they'd be pretty ruined. So it took us about an hour to get set up, but we are all set up now and um, ready to do some sales this fine Saturday morning. So Destraham Fall Fest is a two day show over the middle weekend of November. There's food, there's crafts, there's usually music. I'm sure there will be music later on and there are artists like myself.
Okay, so it's Saturday. It's my first chance, not really my first chance. I could have walked away before, but it's my first time walking away. And it seems like this year has more foot traffic, even though the weather was not super great. It's improved since. I think there are more families this year than last year, which is great for me. And I think there's a lot more, like, just general stuff that I like than there was last year. All right, so I apologize for the kind of weird angle. I'm actually using an easel that I have behind the table for this. So we're about 30 minutes out from the first day of Fall Fest. I feel like sales were already better than they were last year, so yay. Um, also just like feel, felt like there were more people, more families, even though the weather, the weather is nice now, but it was really gross this morning. People were in fairly upbeat spirits. Um, after the rain stopped, we were actually able to put that little shelf out there, um, and I find that that's really helpful for uh, getting people to notice that we have books. And um, we also have a sign that says the sweetest comics in the South. I really wish I had done a sign instead that said something about like Louisiana or St. Charles Parish because I know that is something that people do care about. And I, I care about that too. I think it's really cool. And um, it's really hard for creators down here to get a foot in. Um, so anything that can help with that is a help with that. So what's done well so far? Are, uh, the watercolor kits that I am very proud of are doing pretty well so I'm very happy about that because um, I put a lot of work into them and a lot of care and love and it's just nice to see that people are resonating with that and like that so that's good um, the prints are selling um, not like super much but not not at all so that's good um, and we've sold some copies of 7-inch Kara, so that's also good. So while it hasn't been, oh, and you know, like charms and stickers, those are also selling. So while it isn't the level of steady sales that I used to see at like anime cons, it is an improvement over last year and it is an improvement over on Dewey Fest. So um, I feel like as long as we're making improvements and we're learning and we're trying new things, then it's worth continuing you know what i mean so i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour of the booth before we pick up and uh, yeah so this is the behind the table we did not leave ourselves a whole lot of room but the tent walls have been really nice it's been very windy this weekend and you can see the walls flapping somewhat. I can promise you guys though, if it weren't for these walls, my art would be moving a lot more than it actually is. And everything, I don't think we've had to chase after anything this weekend. So the tent walls are a big improvement. And also they kept some of the mist off of us, which was nice. Okay, so that is the behind the table banner. That's what the front of the main table looks like. We brought the originals in because it was so misty and wet earlier today. Back up to the table front, we've got 7-inch Kara Volume 1 and 2, both set in Southeast Louisiana. We've got Lilliputian Living, which is 
technically set in Southeast Louisiana because I based it mostly off of my own like you know lived experiences we've got curious little things which has a lot of Louisiana reference in it we have our demo copy and some colors as well as my postcards we moved the paint your state kit over here just because there was space for it frankly and then we have the brand new retail grids thanks to Ken and Jolene and these work so much better than those stupid <laughs> grids that I had before. More of the retail grids. I think it makes for a much tidier look. And they don't have to sit on the tabletop, which is fantastic. We've got the mugs. We've got the home print stickers. We've got the vinyl and holographic stickers. We've got acrylic charms. We've got hand-painted wooden charms. We've got my regular wooden charms. Turning over this way, we've got our print area. So we've got two spinner racks of postcards as well as a postcard portfolio. This Louisiana should be over by the Paint Your State. We have the prints in various sizes. And then we also have them up so people can see them. We have a Joseph, and then we have the bookshelf outside that's kind of an eye catch. And it also has short little descriptions of the books. I don't know that people read those, but it makes me feel good about myself. And then we've got the big outside sign. And then we have the banner at the top, which, you know what? Those clips did an okay job holding it this weekend, so... I can't really complain about that. And then take y'all around back. So our neighbor never showed up. That's what it looks like from the outside. That's what it looks like in the garage. Some people actually have little pop-up pup tents, which is a good idea actually, just for extra storage to keep your stuff from getting all wet. And I caught Joseph blowing his nose. So that is the tour the tent what would you say has sold best so far uh, the art kits and i guess the prints really so there were more print sales um i thought we sold at least we haven't checked square yet we have sold a few I mean, charms seem like they always sell. Charms and stickers seem like they always sell pretty well. I need to bring the mug sign tomorrow. I think that's why they're not selling is they don't have a price tag on them. Some people have been interested in them, but no one's actually asked them to The Yeah, I'll bring the sign. I thought I brought it and I, I forgot it and that's on me. I would like to eventually have a big banner to go on the inside that says original art. And then if we keep doing prints like this, a banner that says prints or something like that definitely a banner that says original art over there though would be really cool and uh, we didn't bring our Louisiana banner because I tried to attach it to a retail grid and it was way too big so we're gonna have to figure out some way that we can utilize that in the future but I think it looks I think this setup looks really cute I think we can just hang it from the corner here. I mean, yeah but you gotta also there. like not just hang it you gotta attach it to the ground you do, because it wants to curl. Anyway, I think the setup is very cute. Oh, hey, um, since you had a chance to walk around, mm -hmm. what would you, what, what, what are people really selling? I don't feel like there's as much yard stuff anymore. I think it's because they put in so many new vendors that the yard stuff isn't. Doesn't have the room? Overwhelming. Oh, it got no. diluted. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, there's more, um, like they were selling shirts and jewelry. The people next to us are selling crushed glass. Huh? There's a lot of jewelry vendors. Okay. That might be better for me because a lot of what I do compared to yard stuff, a lot of what I do is small. So like being next to handmade jewelry or homemade jewelry vendors is a closer comparison than like yard stuff. Not that I don't like the yard stuff, but betting last year a few jewelry vendors did well so they told other people and then all the other jewelry vendors joined in basically i i think during the pandemic a lot of people picked up 
uh, side hustles. Like a lot of people got into art during, it could be, yeah, or they got a cricket and they've been using the cricket, which is cool. Like I am all for entrepreneurship. Yeah, so that could be us too. So this is something Joseph and I kind of came up with at Ondui and it's a dry box. And ideally it would be a box with a gasket, but those are expensive and we're working on upgrading to that. But basically this is a box we're gonna leave here with the display goods that if it did get ruined from humidity, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And we're literally using these desiccator packets. You can get them on Amazon and that's going to pull some of the excess moisture out of the air. And I'm gonna move this away from the walls, but this is kind of a safe place. We're not leaving like, we're not leaving like the books or the prints or anything like that, but these sort of smaller things or the wooden things are going in the dry box. We are headed off to day two of Destraham Fall Fest. It is 9.08. The festival opened at 9. Uh, that was somewhat intentional on my part. I assume a lot of people are going to be at church for a while, at least until like 10. The weather is beautiful but cold, which when you're under a tent for eight hours is outside is kind of rough. Joseph, how did we sell yesterday? Uh, pretty good. I think he sold like 231 after fees. 231. What was the big, what was the number one seller? Um, it depends on how you want to calculate it. Technically, postcards. What sold the most? Postcards sold the most. Really? Yeah. I didn't think four. I sold that. <laughs> That's not that great. Well, there was a spread of not, no particular item. Sure. There was a spread, which yeah. is good. We sold some prints, which was good because those are a high a high profit margin item which means we actually recoup our costs on those we sold some of the art kits which I calculated the cost for that last night I had calculated when I bought them and then uh, didn't write it down because I'm super well, I wrote it down but my computer restarted because I'm super smart um, and those it costs me 15 in materials to make and I sell them for 25 I'm rounding it up to 15 in the materials because some of the paints are more expensive than others and that kind of covers the most expensive iteration of the kit, which is the Mardi Gras kit, which has six colors instead of four. So 15 means $10 profit. Of course, I also, there's a lot of back-end materials. Oh, it also covers the paper. I never calculated the paper that I print the stuff on, but that's generally a negligible cost, but 15 would cover that too. Uh, which leaves the 10 to cover me for the time I spent making the tutorials and typing up the tutorials. But eventually I think those are going to, um, I think kits are a good way for me to go. It's something, since I'm an art educator, it's something that allows me to hit so many things I care about from art education and making art accessible to providing quality art supplies to people. Like I just feel really good about it. Um, so I will probably be offering paint your state kits in other states on the Natto shop shortly. So if that sounded exciting to you and you missed out and you want to support what I do and you are a fellow artist or just interested in art, please keep an eye out and actually reach out to me and let me know what state you're from or what state you'd like to see because I'm going to focus on popular demand first rather than attempting to offer all 50 states at once. Um, so we had reordered the coloring books before the show, like way close before the show. And two arrived and the other 23 are arriving 10 days from now and Amazon wasn't honest about that at the time of purchase, which is exciting. Uh, I love, I love Amazon for that. They're so good to small business. Oh, the music was not too loud. Our spot was good for that. And foot traffic wasn't bad yesterday at all. Um, and I didn't even get a chance to walk around the full show. Uh, so I'm hoping I can do that today. Yeah, it's coming up like right here if you can get into it. All 
right, so we are here. Everything is dry, and I'm gonna get set up. So this is Joseph setting up. These are the originals. These are the prints. It is Sunday morning. It has warmed up significantly. I'm gonna go take a little bit of a walk. And bring you guys with me. There are more books. Boy, they got good placement. That's one of the entrances. Oh, they were at the Covington Craft Fair. They really added a lot, a lot of tents since last year. Joseph said he counted 25. Oh. this one there's a lot more and i wouldn't be surprised if they filled in this area next year too well one thing i think i should do for next year is make kara even more front and center i mean i've been thinking about bringing my tables up to the front for years but I also like some of the original art. And, and I mean, frankly, the margins on the comics are terrible. It's one of the other ones. There's, they were here last year, but they, no. Oh. Now see, 
like those Louisiana blanks. Last year I won. Last year I wanted to do uh, yard signs and door hangers and Joseph talked me out of it and that's probably for the best because there's a lot of people who do that and I really want to know who's printing them for them. Okay, and then this is my, our, our walkway. So a few more artists this year, that's cool. Hopefully we can see those numbers grow and in five years some of my students will be selling their zines and minis here, even if they're just subletting from me. Okay, so now we are set up. Uh, Joseph, why don't you do the tour real quick? Because I already walked them around the festival this morning. Oh, I need to switch this one out. This one has fallen. And um, we're just waiting for church to be over so people will come and shop. All right, so we are an hour out from the inn of the Desher Handfall Fest. This weekend was a lot better than last year there's still some definite avenues for growth and improvement on my part though i actually like my placement better than i liked last year's by a long shot and there was good foot traffic for most of the day so i think at this point it's up to me to figure things figure things out But also I think it's up to me to start or to keep working on developing an audience who enjoy my work out here and to figure out what the nerd spaces again and uh, make it a point to be at those nerd spaces.
Okay, so now I get to be queen weirdo because it's breakdown time and Joseph went to go bring the first load of stuff to our house because the Jetta can't carry the tent, three tables, two chairs, and a bunch of other stuff. So it means he's driving and I'm waiting here with the second load of stuff. So everybody else is also breaking up. It's probably a little past four, uh, but a lot of people started breaking up around 3.30 because that's kind of when things started to really slow down. So that works. Um, I have a bit of a headache. It's a tension headache. Uh, it came from wearing my hair up in that stupid bun. So uh, I'm a little bit like right now, but it seemed like it was a good day and um, I don't have like my final totals, but I'll get back to you guys tomorrow with that. And um, I really like the new setup. I think it looks really good. I'm, I mean, there's like obviously stuff that we can continue to improve upon and tweak and like adjust, but I feel like it's in a good direction. And I was really happy that the tent walls solved the wind problems for for the most part, because the wind has been such a major limiting factor in what kind of shows we can do and the types of outdoor shows we're able to do and when we're able to do them. It's still when you have to bring your tent, your tables, your everything to a show, it makes it a lot harder to say yes. Destraham Fall Fest is like five ten minutes away from our house like it's right down the road so this is an easy yes but um there are loads of fall, of festivals and shows in louisiana um and some of them would be really tempting if they provided a tent and the tables but because most of them don't it's harder to say yes to the music level for me was really good at this show. Um, it was there, but not distracting. I could always talk and think over the music, which is a huge improvement for me over on Dewey Fest and an improvement for me over where I was located last year. So even though I'm not, hang on. Okay, so last year I was on the other side of that tree, basically. So not a not hundred yards away, but, but for some reason, over here and I thought this over here this area was gonna be like the end of the world the worst I thought nobody was gonna come down here no we got pretty good foot traffic and um, the way they laid out the tables I think at least where I was sitting made more sense than where we were last year where the way the the tents were situated and some of the others vendor other vendors set up their tents it seemed like like they're after their tent there was nothing else and I was after their tent so um, the setup was a lot better this year. Our neighbor next to us never showed up, which was good for us because it meant the sun was hitting our tent and it made it actually very comfortable inside our tent. In fact, I was getting quite warm, not too hot, but like I could take off my jacket. Um, so we lucked out there. That's not really something we could, we could guarantee, but we also had hot hands on the first day. Those, um, you can get them at, Dollar Tree, you can get them on Amazon. Those are a must for fall and winter outdoor shows, probably early spring outdoor shows too, because there's been a lot of cherry blossom fests that I just like froze myself at basically. It was good. Had barbecue today, had the shrimp and grits yesterday. Good food. The bathrooms, the wait was never like so long that it was untenable. Um, you had the option of porter potties. You could wait to use the bath the single seater in the house or you could use they had like a trailer with bathrooms in it so it wasn't too bad but one this isn't really a complaint it's just a, a notice uh the trailer bathroom is really small it's a four seater i believe somebody broke one of the seats and the the, the walkway is just super narrow and the cubicles are really narrow and there are a lot of kids at this show and um, they have to go to the bathroom with their parent and the parent has to come in with them. So there was a bit of a flow, flow problem it, given the size of those bathrooms when you have like a four year old who doesn't know how to work that kind of a toilet and mom standing outside the door. So if they could get a bigger <laughs> trailer next year or uh, have a family restroom set aside, like even that cistern bathroom would maybe make a good family bathroom because there's more room that would make some sense as well but um 
believe off the top of my head we paid 250 to be here um we definitely made that back we didn't do like buku great sales but we did okay um certainly better than last year and um i can see some areas that i'd like to tweak and um i've probably brought this up i'm sure other people bring this up it's hard selling books selling books is hard so you have options uh th i would say you have three options really your first option is to sell nothing but your books nothing but your books just your books that's what you're here to sell you don't have prints you don't have originals you don't have anything option two is prints and like a toy that could be associated with the book like what we saw at alligator festival and i that's a good option i like that option but then you got to buy the toy in bulk and it's got to be something that kids and adults would actually want to buy um and that could be distracting because then you're going to get people who just want the toy and they don't want the book and then you could do what i do which is sell the books but also sell original art and sell prints and sell like other things like everything i'm selling right now minus some of the hand cut paper stickers it's all all i mean I've, i drew everything in the booth but like i do have like a few fan art stickers still in my sticker pile not a lot just some like old steven universe ones from my anime con days a million years ago um so i do feel like my booth should be more care more care focused but i like i like making art i make art anyway i have an art youtube channel so i like selling my art and i like selling the originals if people want to buy the originals and I like selling prints if people want to buy the prints so I don't want to move away from that like um for me personally I'm good I'm good with that you know um it's not something I would recommend if you don't like making if you don't like generating extra art outside of your books I wouldn't recommend it if you're a writer and you and the artist are not like sharing the tent together or you're not you don't yeah. want to sell art in your tent for whatever reason I can understand that but um, I mean I don't have a problem with selling books but if you are also a self-published or small published or small distributor or indie published book creator who sells your books at events and you have other you've tried other things you have other suggestions I'd be curious to hear what you're doing and what works for you because um, I've been showing you what I'm doing and what does work and what doesn't work but I'm always looking for new ideas we've definitely got some ideas for the tent and for theming and things that I think are gonna be really cool when we get around to doing them 30 years from now but uh, that's gonna take some time that's gonna take some prep so we're not we're not there yet but one of the things I really do want to like work on as we work on preparing for future shows is uh, like the 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 big banners and big signage, um, and that's an area of weakness that I, I knew was a problem for a while. Do anime cons forever? People don't read the signs. They just don't. They just don't read the signs. Whereas people were re it was weird. People were reading the Nato suit banner side, which is an old one because um, I have two scrim batter that's like that's kind of like a uh, u-bow right but they're not really weather safe uh, that that are like seven inch care specific and I actually like those for like flying shows because they're really lightweight um, so my vinyl long sign is old and it mentions like it mentions the blog on it and people were reading it and like what's natto soup and blogging and it's like oh it's time for a new banner so uh, that's funny to me because Joseph is a big they okay look years of people years of doing anime cons and them not reading the signs um, it, it kind of like breaks you as a vendor in a way because it's like you have the signs but those are really just like CYA for you they're not you don't really expect your customers to read the signs they're available and hopefully it catches their eye but they're not reading what's on the sign whereas at a show like this we actually did have signs out uh, people read some people read them some people didn't but uh, so we do we have bundles for the books and they're like I have like display copies that are packaged together to represent the bundles but Joseph talked me out of doing a sign that mentions the bundles and uh, I feel like we definitely lost some up sales because of that so uh, I'm just going I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it in the future I'm gonna do it because they're like they're they're anytime bundles but we had a package like Christmas um, 
and I we once I started mentioning when like once we both started mentioning like if you buy volume one and two together they're just $35 instead of whatever 15 plus 25 is 40 it's 40 um, then we started selling more of them together which is good because honestly volume two is the better book <laughs> so um, I'm mostly just waiting for Joseph to get back with the car so we can hopefully get everything in that load um, I'll get back to you guys tomorrow uh, probably maybe tomorrow with like my final recap and my final thoughts and my price breakdown okay, so it has been a week but I am finally able to do my Destrahan Fall Fest recap so I earned I sold $517 that weekend minus Square's transaction. Well, that is after you deduct Square's transaction fees. Uh, the table itself, or the space, I should say, cost $250, I believe. And um, I did twice as well as I did the year prior. So I can see some positive growth. There's still a lot of changes and improvements that I wanna make, but I can see like a goal to move towards. And that's really exciting. And that makes me really happy. As you guys saw, the weather was not really my friend that weekend, and we still did better than we did that show last year. So improvements. Um, would I recommend Fall Fest to somebody else? You know, that's like a, that's a really tough one. Would I recommend it to another children's book creator in my situation? I mean, for me, the appeal is it's 10 minutes down the road and I live in this area. So I can tell my students to come check me out and ask me questions. I can, when I promote on social media, I can mention that I may have taught their kids. So there is that community that I can kind of tap into that um, I really didn't have access to in other areas. And I mean, I can, when I say community, I, I really don't mean like family support because they ain't none there like they don't have any money and that's fine but they also don't they're very shy introverted people so you know what I mean like I don't come I don't have like the family extrovert who's willing to talk about my stuff with everyone and I'm increasingly becoming convinced that if you're a small artist and you do craft shows having that aunt that uncle that grandparent that brother or sister who like champions your stuff the one who has like a million friends and they bring them by the table that is so helpful i i don't have that i come from i am one of the more extroverted people in my family and i'm also kind of introverted so that tells you a lot about that um and if i'd had that it would be even better right but i don't you got to work with what you got so i don't necessarily know if i can or if i would even want to recommend somebody coming from out of state to do this show it is it is a very specific thing and I am specifically specifically getting out of anime cons and moving into a different area of my life. So if you are watching this because you've done anime cons historically, it is it is such a weird fit. And I'd already been doing like Cherry Blossom Festival and Handmaiden Bound. I'd already been doing some craft fairs when I lived in Nashville. Um, and Louisiana has, I think, just Louisiana May now as an anime con and that's it and it's not a very good show um so we really don't have a lot of those kind of events so you have to kind of make your own event or turn an event into that so if you've already got those kind of events if you've already got like something that works for you picking up Destraham Fall Fest is not going to be the best fit for you but if you are in the area, if it's like a 30 minute drive for you and it's convenient for you and you don't mind being outside in the weather and potentially being very cold. And that's another thing Destra, I'm mean, not Destra, Nashville got me used to is the seven years I spent in Nashville, uh, the weather, climate change um, made it get very, very cold, like colder than they would normally have seen. So um, it kind of built up my tolerance for being outside in the rain in a show like I hate that but it make built some resilience up in me that I didn't have so um, if you're coming from doing like indoor only shows outdoor shows in the weather it's rough it is rough and it's an uphill battle and I would recommend you wear lots and lots of layers and I would recommend you invest in some hot hands and I would re recommend you get some fleece line leggings and I would recommend you have a lap blanket lap 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 blanket <laughs> and um if you have access to electricity maybe 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 a small heater 
because that's what people were doing at the Ren Fair and that seemed like a good idea. So there are ways you can combat it, but frankly, it takes time and it takes experiencing it and like figuring out what you want to fix to be able to do it. So I had a good show. I had a better show than last year. I don't know if I can necessarily, like lots, there are lots of other vendors there who've been there forever and they have good experiences with the show, but craft fairs and art fairs are such a your specific mileage may vary and what you're willing to sink into it and how you're willing to promote it and where you're willing to talk about it and how many times you're willing to come back and do it over and over again. It makes such a big difference. It's kind of different from anime cons in that aspect because in, 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 in that regard, if you're going to like a big anime con like Otakon or something, it can be a one and done experience. You don't have to live in the area. You're probably never going to see these people again. So it's really important that your stuff sell then when you have it. Whereas a show like this, they got to see your stuff around. They got to see you around. They got to see you posted on next door. They got to see you posted on Facebook. It helps if they see you walking the dog. Like there's so much of like you, you want to be familiar with people so they'll come check out what you've got. I need bigger signage. I need bigger signage outside of my tent. I need bigger signage in the tent. I need to make it feel more like an event. And that's my goal. That was my goal at Anime Cons was anytime you visited my table, it felt kind of special and like an event. I want to bring that to my craft fair experience as well. <laughs> I always think about like Sandra Lee with that like semi homemade with Sandra Lee show. You guys, if you're not familiar with it, you can find clips of it on YouTube. It's pretty notorious, but she would talk about her tablescapes. And um, while that was often a bone uh, that people would use like against her to mock her a little bit, you could tell that's where her heart was. Like that's what she liked to do. And I kind of brought a lot of in inspiration from that to my own tables. So, um, I mean, they're very different kinds of tables. One is like you're feeding people. So they're sitting at like your Thanksgiving or your Christmas table and eating. And another is they're buying from you. So you're trying to create a customer experience a customer interaction and you want it to be memorable in a good way and I want to keep pushing my craft fair how I present myself and how I present my work so that it is memorable in a good way so um this is a show I'll probably keep doing I mean I, I live right down the road you know um and hopefully I will continue to build an audience and continue to develop those relationships and start feeling like I'm part of the community and maybe people will start recognizing me as like oh it's that illustrator who lives down the street that would be or or she teaches art squad at the library like that would be really cool so I have like a different vested interest for why I would continue doing this show um we, we stayed at home we could not we could not have gotten a hotel closer unless we stayed on the grounds um and while we ate there, we ate there by choice. It would have been super easy to go back home and eat or to bring food, but we ate there by choice and the food was really delicious. And uh, my location was far enough from the music that I didn't fritz out, which is mwah, so good because I've been doing a bunch of shows where it's very loud and I get very fritzy. I felt like Destraham Fall Fest this year was a better experience for me than the Louisiana Book Festival. And um, even though I had about the same amount of promotion from both, which was like none, I had to do all my own promoting, this was a better experience for me. I sold more books, I got to meet more people, I got to talk about what I do and show off my art way more than I got to with the Louisiana Book Festival. So um, craft fairs and children's books are just a weird fit and since mine are they're all ages. I think I like my own books. You know, I write what I'm interested in. Um, I think of them as being kind of like all ages in the way someone might go back and reread Anne of Green Gables or somebody might reread Alice in Wonderland or the Chronicles of Narnia, like that kind of all ages. Um, but they are marketed towards middle grade and tween readers. And that is already a hard market. And very few of those people in that age group were actually at the show. But that's because historically there's been nothing for them there. And now there's people like me who are starting to sell things for them there. So I also think by continuing to do that and encouraging other people who make things not for little bitty kids and not for toddlers, but for older kids and teenagers like jewelry and resin and acrylic and wood burnt stuff that um, will start having more of that audience come in and then my sales will improve as well. So I see it as kind of an investment in my time and energy and I don't mind making it because I can see that 
that personal growth. So do I recommend if you do fall fast? Well, you're going to have to be the judge. Judge based on the footage that I showed you walking around the show. Judge by what my booth looked like and what my sales looked like. And hopefully decide for yourself because in this instance, community, audience, the age you're making for, what you're making and how far away you live are all such big factors that I can't decisively tell you one way or the other. So hopefully I was able to provide you guys with the information that you need to decide if Fall Fest is a good fit for you. If you liked what you saw and you'd like to purchase some of it for yourself, I am listing everything in the Natto shop at nattosoup.com slash shop. So not only is that a great way to do some Christmas shopping or some shopping for yourself, but it is also a great way to help support the work that I do here on the channel and get some cute stuff. So hopefully you'll just even just go see, go check it out. You might see something that you like again at nattosoup.com slash shop. If you are on a seriously tight budget and you are not able, you're not looking to do any shopping, I feel you friend. Um, you can also support the work that I do by clicking the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber and just double check, do me that solid double, double check, uh, subscribing and clicking the bell notification. So YouTube lets you know when I update. So not only do I do show recaps, but I also do show reconnaissance where I go find out if a show might be a good fit for me. I also do loads of tutorials and reviews. So hopefully I've got stuff that you guys will enjoy. And even if you're not shopping, but you have a little money to spend and you'd like to support what I'm doing, you can join me at Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. They generally, when I have a backlog, um, this year has been rough. Uh, when I have a backlog, they get early access to everything. And I also sh share line arts, like printable coloring line arts with them, as well as backer exclusive tutorials and other goodies. So you can join me at patreon.com slash soup and help support the work that I'm doing here. I enjoyed Fall Fest. I hope next year is going to be even better. I'd like to see continued growth and I hope you guys enjoyed this recap and found it helpful, useful, and informative. So stay warm guys. Bye!